this video, I'm going to show you how I piece together this system just using uh, some slightly older uh, commercially available parts and uh, to come up with this motorized slider. A little while ago, I was able to source this older Kessler Crane analog system uh, with these Oracle controllers. And of course, I'm using my low boy slider. Now, what this video is not, it is not a do-it-yourself how to build a motion control system from scratch by, you know, buying some motors, buying some pulleys, getting an Arduino board and programming in, rolling your own uh, motion control system. You know, this video is just about kind of throwing these parts together to get a usable, production-friendly uh, piece of equipment. Uh, I should mention that I'm probably going to put all this up for sale very soon because of, uh, because of this, because of this racket that you're hearing. Um, for myself, uh, almost all the work I do is live production. It's usually uh, in quiet rooms and we're shooting sync sound dialogue. With this, I think if you uh, do a lot of MOS shooting, either environmental shots or product shots, or if you uh, do time lapses, especially with larger, heavier cameras, and if you do stop motion, or if you work in environments that have a higher ambient noise level, like at concerts or at athletic events, something like this would be actually a really handy and very frugal system to uh, piece together. So enough of the sales pitch, um, and let's just take this apart and I'll show you how I put it together. So what I was able to pick up was this uh, Oracle controller. Uh, two motors for, uh, for sliders, one is geared towards uh, time-lapse and the other is geared towards uh, live action. And of course this uh, motor mount with a belt drive transmission and some cables. Now the trick, of course, the first trick was mounting the motor to the sled. And to help do that, Kessler actually made this bracket this motor mount bracket, and this, this I believe is for their shuttle dolly bracket. Now, I did, as you can see, modify it with a couple new holes, and um, you know, this is a good reason why you should always, uh, you know, try to avoid brain farts when you're working with uh, overpriced parts, because as you can see, I was out of phase when I drilled my first set of holes. But anyway, now let's get to the sled. So this is what I'm working with. This is our starting off point. Uh, this, of course, is the uh, low boy sled. And as you can see, it's, you know, basically a cheese plate with a quarter 20 and 3 16 tapped holes. Now these rail ends over here and here, um, they're designed to accept pretty much any length uh, one by two rectangular tubing. And um, they are, of course, also tapped with uh, 3 8 and quarter 20 and 3 8 just to give us uh, multiple mounting points. So that's our starting point. Now the question is, you know, how and where do we want to mount our Kessler motor, our older Kessler motor? Now on the Kessler site, it looked like maybe they're mounting their motor something like this. Now this, uh, this simply won't work for, uh, for my slider because the timing belt will, uh, will need to go right through the uh, slider body. So after, you know, playing around with it for a bit, I think I'm pretty sure I decided to install this um, something like this. And this will uh, permit the timing belt to go underneath the slider off on the side here, not right through the middle, which will get in the way of the uh, tripod head uh, tie down. So our belt will come in over here. And our belt will also be held in between the rails and the rail supports. So it'll be tucked in out of the way and protected. And that's something, of course, uh, that's important. And uh, this will be out of the way of our fluid head for operating, for uh, you know, ease of operating. So that's you know, roughly where it seemed to uh, want to fit. So let's just bolt it together. Now, looking at the uh, bottom side of the uh, slider, we can see the uh, quarter 20 and 3 8 16 tapped holes. Again, the cheese plate on a one inch on center, one inch uh, pattern. So I've decided again to mount the motor right here. And I'm going to be using quarter 20 bolts. Now to, to get a quarter 20 bolt into a 3 8 thread, I simply use these thread adapters, these tripod thread adapters. Uh, this is just part of my AKS kit. I always carry this with me on a shoot. Um, if we ever need to adapt, you know, the most common uh, thread sizes that we use, quarter 20 and 3 8. So using the Kessler hardware, I'm going to bolt it in right here. Now mounting this motor to uh, my sled was actually pretty easy because the uh, Kessler shuttle is actually pretty similar in size and weight to mine. 
Okay, I just put on some uh, really short rails so we could uh, turn this and look at this rig, you know, from this end. Okay, so now we know that we need to secure this timing belt right about here on this piece, the end, uh, the rail support for our slider. Okay, so the trick is, how do we do this quickly, easily, and frugally, and also do it in a production-friendly way? Now, this timing belt is, uh, is actually a standard industrial piece. It turns out it's an XL series belt. I did buy it from Kessler Crane because um, this was actually my first experience working with these type of timing belts. And um, lo and behold, it's just a standard piece. So you could go to Neckmaster Car and order this by the foot. Um, so whenever we do this prototyping or one-off projects, I always try to use off-the-shelf parts because they are just tremendously much more frugal and uh, they're always available. Like, you know, you can go down to your store and pick them up. So what I did to secure this timing belt, instead of coming up with a custom CAD solution, I bought a couple of these. And these are timing belt gears, okay? They're cog tooth, they're made for the cogs. And the way they work, of course, is the belt will fit onto them. And the beauty is it won't slip. As long as you have some tension in the belt, uh, it won't slip on the gear. Now with a V-belt or a rib belt, uh, they always have the potential and a tendency to uh, slip around a little bit. So with the uh, timing belt, again, it won't slip. So I bought both the flange and the unflange because actually, uh, again, I didn't know what's going to be easier to work with. And so it turns out that after trying both ways, the uh, unflanged was uh, a little easier to work with. So next trick is I simply have to mount this over here at about the right height and I find a way to clamp this belt to the gear. So it all starts with a simple piece of uh, aluminum plate. Uh, this is 3 8 inch thick and uh, it's drilled and tapped to accept these gears. So here's a piece that I made um, with the flange gear just to try it out. Okay, And the idea with this of course is to have this rest here wrap the belt around that, and then clamp the belt into place. Um, you could obviously, the first example is you probably want to use a screw, like maybe put an angle piece over here and just have a bolt running through to tighten it down. Uh, that'll work great. Um, it's not as quick and fast and production friendly as they want it to be. So I start to think about things like uh, bicycle seat posts and quick release bicycle wheels, because they have a very simple lever cam to uh, draw the bolt through to tighten up the post and lock it into place. Again, going to the McMaster car catalog, I found this. This lever, okay, this lever lock. I'm not sure, I have to go back and see what it's actually called. But as you can see on top, it's narrower and on the bottom it's thicker. Okay, so if you thread something through, if you thread something through here, and then you slowly turn this lever, it'll clamp down on a holding surface, okay? And this, uh, this is actually a little too big, a little overkill. I think a, a bicycle seat post clamp would probably um, be a better fit, but McMaster Car had it. It's very reasonably priced and I picked it up on the day. Okay. So the solution ended up being, my solution ended up being this. I found that the, uh, the flangeless gear actually is a little easier to work with. And I mounted my handle on the plate with a couple of mounting holes. They're gonna go right here. And the way it'll work is I'll get the gear, or I'll get the uh, belt, let me get it in place. You get the belt in place, okay? You tighten it up, you know, by pulling on it and, you know, getting in place. And then I simply have to turn the lever a little bit and it locks, it locks the belt in place. When I'm ready to take it all apart, lift up the belt, lift up the lever, and pull out the belt. This way, if I have the right length belt or a long enough belt, I could use it for any length slider, whether it's going to be, well, this, you know, oh, uh, a no foot or, you know, a, a no slider to a 20 feet in length. If I have a 20 foot uh, or 22 foot piece of uh, timing belt, it'd be very fast, quick and easy to do it and secure it with this and it won't loosen up on us. Now, with the hole down bolted in place, I simply take the belt, put it over the cog, make sure it's 
there are no extra teeth in it. Line up the belt, this belt, with the bottom of the lever and lever it snug so it won't slip, okay? And then do the other end and you're good to go. You're ready to shoot. When you're done with the shot or you're done with the slider, simply take the lever, pull out the belt, uh, do it on the other end, and the slider is ready to just go home and you're done. And this is my uh, do-it-yourself uh, custom motorized uh, slider setup. Um, you could actually do this just with hand tools, with a uh, with a drill and possibly a hacksaw. I mean, I did use a drill press and a small bandsaw because that's what I have in the garage. But as you can see, it's just very simple stuff. Um, just common over-the-counter materials and even uh, over-the-counter components that you could source, uh, well, on eBay. Uh, but as I mentioned, because of this noise, it's not really the appropriate tool for myself, so I'm gonna put all this up for sale. Um, I have some contact information uh, in the description of the video, and uh, once it does sell, I'm gonna pull that contact information off so you know that this is sold, and I'll probably just say slider sold. So, hope to hear from you soon, and we'll see you on the next one.